Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. We're picking up pretty much right where we left off. Just a little bit of reconfiguration, and here's what we're doing today. We are getting this system one step closer to our official testing, dug through the bin of spare parts, and found a couple old Omite heat sinks and heat sink clips that we could repurpose for our little exploration today. I meant to use one heat sink for both, but as luck would have it, I didn't leave enough space between <laughs> the transistor <laughs> and this giant capacitor, so I couldn't actually flip the clip up. Also, the same mechanical interference happened with that potentiometer and also that terminal block, so that just kind of wasn't happening. So we're kind of finagling both clips around all the interferences and lining it up and making sure. It so I just said, screw it. We will have two separate heat sinks. See, this is the thing that seems weird. Why are we getting such a big input voltage? This is set to two volts peak to peak. And we're getting a lot more than that. If this is to be trusted, we're getting 10 volts peak to peak in. Hmm. Two volts. Yeah, it looks like our bias point isn't quite right. By unfurling this resistor a little bit, we can get that a little more symmetrical. There we go. Beauty. And now we need to turn that down. Because when we're clipping, these seem to get less efficient. And those heat sinks <laughs> starting to warm up. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, uh, that's a thing. Let's turn this down. Let's even turn the input voltage down. Let's be really gentle with this thing. Because we're about to test it with a low impedance load for the first time. Should have about 4 ohms on the output. So this is a weird inductive load. Some people refer to it as a speaker, but I don't know about that. I'm gonna call it a weird, slightly reactive load that has a four ohm DC resistance. Output voltage is gonna get weird because we're gonna call this a four ohm load. It's not voltage, extrapolate power. It's not a pure resistive load. We've got some one ohm resistors to play around with that when we're doing our formal testing. We'll do one ohm, four ohm, and eight ohm tests. And if you're curious, yeah, we've got a couple on a slightly beefy heatsink for that testing. <gasps> Guys. Okay, we're going to leave it really quiet. This amplifier's got some chutzpah. Based on how loud that got. Let's just just the frequency. <laughs> we're really not pulling much power. This really goes to show it does not take much power to make a decent volume in a speaker because we are pulling 0 0.01 amps. Sorry, 0 0.01 amps. Wow, we're pulling 10 milliamps at 16 volts. We are pulling 0 0.16 watts, and this is loud enough that I'm uncomfortable turning it up much more with neighbors at this time of night. That is pretty cool. Now we're at 400 hertz. Noise. So now we're at 24 volts quarter of an amp this 
it's all right. Let's turn this down even more. Should allow us to push output power without being too obnoxiously loud. Nice. And if I take it off the desk, it's a lot less loud. Oh, nice. Got that nice 100 hertz rumble coming out of this amp. The speaker is not made for it. I can tell it's vibrating. Sucking a decent amount of power. Oh, nice. Pushing about half an amp. That's pretty cool. I think this is actually going to work really well as an audio amp, um, which is fantastic. And yeah, 24 volts in, decent wub out. I mean, if we weren't using a speaker that was terrible, I mean, we might have something to talk about here. Um, wow. Okay. Um, let's... Wow. I am... This commentary is so trash because I am just... I'm like shaking. I'm like... This is so cool. Love it. Discrete Class AB amplifier. Decent signal quality. Basically first pass success. This is cool. Okay. Uh, anyways, pause. I've basically got our audio track coming in from the PC on uh, this. And actually, I should probably turn up the output. I'll just turn it up as high as it goes. Um, yeah, we can see we're getting some stuff coming in. Looks like audio. All right, so we should be getting some sort of audio signal. I wish the speaker was better. We've got... <laughs> A big old speaker. I actually really like this, so I'm assuming it'll survive, but if it doesn't, that'll make me quite sad. So we're gonna be really gentle with the input voltage change, because it sure does love to push the speakers around. Uh, but this just has a, a woofer, a tweeter, and a mid-range driver. Uh, let's... Apparently we zoomed in a little bit too much on the vertical scale. I'm hoping that this microphone really... That is spicy. That is my adjective. This is a spicy power amplifier. That's my final verdict. Spicy. I can't wait to test this tomorrow when we can actually crank it until we're near clipping. I think we're going to get some volume out of this thing, which is ultimately, of course, output power. I just want a little bit of enjoyment. I just want to hear the thing. Yeah. Hopefully my license to this song includes the waveforms. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> That's a song I know a little bit better, and that sounds exactly right. This is another one that I'm a little more familiar with. Let's see if I can pick up on anything. Okay, I'm gonna do direct AB. I've got my studio monitor mute right now. 
indiscernible. Indiscernible. I... I literally could not tell you that this was being driven from a different app. I, I literally couldn't tell you. So I forget what these are. I'll drop a link to the description. They're not the best speakers on the market, but they're Edifier speakers. They're pretty decent. I mean, I've basically got the studio monitor coming, uh, sorry, from the built-in amplifier to the Edifier speakers. And then I've got our DIY power amplifier coming into my other ear and I'm just listening. They're about the same volume. They sound great. This sounds great. I love this thing. I absolutely love it. Of course, regulating absolute volume, like absolute amplitude, like if we wanted a power amplifier with a gain of one, now that would be a different design challenge. Dare I say, it might even be a little more difficult. You know, if we don't really care what the output amplitude is, we just don't want there to be a lot of distortion. Oh, the other speaker's still on. <laughs> there you go. I was trying to turn it down more. It was already off. Yeah. Yeah, there's a level of detail that's coming through really well, and I'm not super surprised because we just saw this amplifier accurately reproducing um, the sound, or the, the frequency. It's basically sound. Basically constant output amplitude between 10 hertz and about 500 kilohertz, which is way above what a person can hear and below what a person can hear. So I'm not surprised that audio sounds great when we're passing it through this thing. Uh, am I happy? Yes. Surprised? No. The heat sinks are slightly warm to the touch, but really not hot. So what that probably means is they're necessary. The reason why I'm so curious about the low frequencies as opposed to the high frequencies is simply because there's more power typically in the low frequencies than the higher ones. So if this thing was going to start freaking out about output current because of the output impedance, um, the low frequencies is where I've typically seen clipping and, and distortion first. So yeah, when we were doing the, the 100 ohm test, or sorry, the, the 10 hertz test, and I saw the speaker cone start to go pretty aggressive, I was like, ooh, we better, uh, better settle down a little. Um, all right. I think that's enough playing around for one video. Editor, I, I don't know what you're going to be able to do with this. Hopefully this turns into something good. If not, whatever. At least I had fun. Uh, I just want to thank everyone for watching today. Thank you for watching it for everyone. I am a kid in a candy store today. No science. A little bit of engineering. It's really just me listening to some music and cranking the power amplifier. Um, yeah, I'm super excited that you were all able to join us today, and we'll see you in the next one. Um, I'm not going to give you guys the Amazon link. We usually do some affiliate links. I'm not even going to link you guys to this speaker because it sucks. This thing is so bad. I couldn't tell if the amplifier was bad or if the speaker was bad, but after hooking up something decent to it, I can clearly tell the amplifier's fine. So anyways, yeah, this has been a ton of fun, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to our Patreon and YouTube channel members. I really appreciate you guys throwing a couple dollars in the hat and making awesome projects like this possible, <laughs> even if they are a little ugly. Oh, man. Anyways, I can't wait to dive in and compare some of these amplifiers to one another. Maybe we'll throw a Class D in there at some point. I don't even know, but... All I can say is I really enjoyed getting this on the bench and testing it out with you. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.